In video number 223, we looked at how RFID tags work. Then I promised you we would hack and clone these cards. This is what we will do today. And as usual, we will not break any laws. Ritzy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. RFID tags are widely used for access control and many other applications. Today we will focus on access systems because many of them still are very primitive and I show you how we can clone cards in seconds using a cheap copier or an Arduino and a small board for a few dollars. If you did not watch the introductory video, it might be a good idea to do that first. In this video we will use an access control system consisting of a simple RFID reader for low frequency and high frequency cards and the RFID board sent to me by Vedran in one of my last mailbag videos. Several RFID chips, an RFID copier, an Arduino Uno with an RC522 board and a Proxmark 3 hacker device. As said in the introductory video, there are three classes of RFID cards, low, high and ultra high frequency cards. Let's start with the low frequency cards. They are the oldest and most primitive. Vedran's access control system has a web interface where we can learn it which cards are acceptable. When somebody comes to the door, after reading the tag, it compares the code with its list of acceptable codes and opens the door if OK. I use here a solenoid to simulate the door opener. Let's start with a low frequency chip. We present it to the reader and because it's on the list, it opens the door. Now we take another RFID chip. This time it's built into a bracelet. The door does not open. Everything OK as expected. So we know that the system can distinguish between friend and foe. Now comes the trick. This little machine with two buttons, read and write. I take the working chip and press the read button. Then I take another chip and press write. No reaction. If I take the bracelet and press write, we get a confirmation. If I present it to the door reader, it lets me in. So we were able to clone the working chip in seconds. Scary. How was that possible? To show you the difference between the two chips, I use the well-known RFID hacker, the Proxmark 3. For the first chip, it shows valid EM410XID found, which means it's a type EM4100. And there we see the ID. If you do the same with a bracelet, it says the same. But they are obviously not the same chip. The first was not accepted by the copier because it contains a real EM4100 chip which is not writable for the user. The bracelet contains a T5577 chip where we can change the ID. So if you want to clone low frequency chips you need T5577 tags. Of course you find the link in the description. By the way, if we compare the tag ID of the two chips they are really the same. We can do even more. The Proxmark 3 can simulate RFID tags. If I simulate the acceptable code, I can open the door with the Proxmark instead of the card. And if I would store a number of ID codes, the Proxmark could read them and simulate one after the other in high speed. You might say this is old technology. So let's try the newer one. Let's try a high frequency chip. Still not state of the art, but widely used. For this experiment we use an Arduino Uno and this RC522 board. Fortunately we can use an RFID library with many examples. First we need the dump info sketch. Also here we focus on the UID, which usually is used by these door readers. Here we see the UID of this chip. If we go to our door opener, our chip is recognized and it opens. 
Now we go back to the Arduino and load the change UID sketch. We enter the UID we read before and start the sketch. Now we need another card, one with a changeable UID. They are also called Chinese magic cards. If we put it on the reader writer, the new UID is programmed as we can check with the Proxmark 3. It now has the same UID. As with the low frequency bracelet, let's go to the door opener and present the newly written card. It reads the card, but does not open. And also, the card is no more recognized by the reader. It seems to be dead. What happened? I did not do anything. Back to the Proxmark 3, we see that also here the card is no more readable. Bad luck. Let's try a second one. Same behavior. Now we have two dead cards. Let's check the internet if we find anything. Unfortunately, I do not find any information about this case and also not a lot of information about my reader. Nobody else seems to have the same problem. Fortunately, I found a command for the Proxmark 3 to revive dead cards. Let's try it out. It rewrites sector 0 with a valid UID and information about the card itself called ATQA and SAK. And indeed, it works again. At least something. Here you see the table which shows the different cards and their ATQA and SAK numbers. In case you are in a similar situation than me. I did not find a sketch for the Arduino for this card reviving, so you need a Proxmark 3 or similar for that purpose. My theory is that one Chinese company invented these lovely changeable magic cards and created a security issue for the industry. Now the engineers of the Chinese reader company started a counterattack, and before they read the card they issue a change UID command which writes all zeros into sector zero. The card is dead and cannot do any harm. With this trick they got on the same level again and the magic cards lost its magic. Clever! But maybe I'm completely wrong with my theory and you know more about this fact. I would be very interested. A few other things. I tried to read the RFID chip of Dishka. These PET chips run on 134 kHz, not on 125, and also use different standards. But I was not successful with that. She did not like the procedure, which took a while and will probably no more visit me in my lab anymore. I tried simulation also on high frequency, but was not successful. A colleague with another Proxmark 3 clone has similar problems. He was a little more successful, he got it working at least from time to time. I use a Chinese clone of the Proxmark 3 Easy, a cheaper version of the Proxmark. The Pro version is much more expensive. The cheapo uses the same software and has very similar hacking functionality. The Proxmark is necessary if you want to dig deeper into RFID protocols or if you want to hack different cards. It works with a wide range of standards we did not cover today. Alternatively, using the Arduino with cheap boards gets you already somewhere with only a few bucks. There are many better and newer RFID chips available, most of them no more hackable with a reasonable effort. So it's not guaranteed that you can clone the tag of your company's access system or put more money on your chip for the coffee machine but it's fun to play with these small tags. Next we will play with the bigger brothers, the UFH tags, which promise entirely different functions. So stay tuned. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.